Now we've already seen how to draw the graphs of sine and cosine, and that's good because a picture is worth a thousand words, and a lot of times the graph of something is a picture that's going to be very useful to us. How can we draw the graphs of the other four trigonometric functions, the tangent, the secant, the cotangent, and the cosecant? Well, to get that done, we're going to need to have um, one important idea, and there's really two important ideas. Um, the first one is a pretty, pretty common experience. If you take uh, a regular size number and you divide it by a pretty large number, that's going to be tiny. So, for example, if you order maybe five pizzas and uh, invite a few friends over and more and more friends start showing up, then the number of pizzas divided by the number of people that's going to give you how much each person can have, and that's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, right? One pizza divided by 20,000 people, everybody gets a very, very tiny fraction of the pizza. So that one's pretty common. That's not the one we want, though. If we rearrange this, we see that a regular size number divided by a tiny number is actually large. That makes sense as well, because we're asking how many times can this tiny number go into this regular size number? Well, if it's really tiny, it will go in there many, many, many times, right? So this is the principle that we're interested in, in drawing the graphs of sine and cosine. Regular size divided by tiny is going to be large. Now, how do we use that? Well, let's look at um, graphing the secant. Remember, the secant of an angle is 1 over the cosine. We saw that from the definition of the secant and using similar triangles. So in order to graph the secant, we can start with the graph of cosine and then use the principle that a regular size number divided by a tiny number is large. Here's what I mean. We know that the cosine of 0 is 1 and the cosine of pi halves is 0. The cosine of pi is negative 1. The cosine of 3 pi halves is 0 and the cosine of 2 pi is back up to 1. And of course this picture goes in the other direction too. The cosine of um, negative pi halves is 0. The cosine of negative pi is negative 1. The cosine of negative 3 pi halves is back to 0 and the cosine of negative 2 pi is back up to 1. So we can pretty quickly draw a reasonable sketch of what the graph of the cosine looks like. In fact, if you just remember being on the Ferris wheel, right, and cosine is the horizontal component, you start off very far forward, right, when the angle is zero, you're, you're all the way forward. As the angle increases, then you move back as you move up, and then you go all the way back to you're at the very back of the Ferris wheel before moving back to the front again, and that pattern just repeats. So, okay, well, how does that apply to secant? Well, secant is one over the cosine. So if we want to draw the graph of the secant, let me just change my color here. Okay, so first off, at zero the secant is one, and one or at zero the cosine is one, and one over one is going to be one. So the secant is also one at zero. Um, and now let's see what happens. We're taking as as the angle increases, um, the cosine is getting smaller and smaller, right? So we're taking one and dividing it by smaller and smaller numbers. Well, 1 divided by a tiny number is a large number, right? The smaller this number gets, the larger it goes. So we've got a little problem when we get to pi halves because we're going to have 1 over 0, which is undefined. But until then, this idea of 1 divided by a tiny is large is going to give us larger and larger results like this. The same thing will happen as we move backwards with the angle. Of course, there's going to be trouble where cosine is 0 because 1 divided by 0 is was undefined. So I'll just mark where the trouble spots are going to be with a vertical asymptote here. Happens every time the cosine is 0. Okay, let's see. As we go back now, the, the cosine's positive. And 1 divided by a positive has got to be positive. In fact, 1 divided by tinier and tinier numbers is going to get larger and larger and larger. So we're going to do this. We're going to have a vertical asymptote as we approach negative pi halves. Now over here on the other side of this vertical asymptote, let's see. At pi, the cosine is negative 1. And 1 divided by negative 1 is also negative 1. So the secant just touches there. And then we're taking 1 divided by negative numbers. So we're going to get something negative. But those are going to become more and more negative because of this principle that a regular size divided by a tiny is large. The tinier the cosine gets, 
the bigger 1 over the cosine gets. So, same picture here, you can see, because of that reason, right? So, all I'm saying is that by knowing the graph of the cosine, you can figure out what the graph of the secant's going to be if you just understand this idea that a regular size number divided by a tiny number, a tiny number can go into a regular size number many, many times. So you can see the secant is also a periodic function. And how long does it take for it to repeat? Well, it starts here, right? And um, makes sort of a U shape here, and then an upside down U, and then it ends there. The distance from minus pi halves to 3 pi halves is 2 pi. So secant is also a 2 pi periodic function. You can figure out its graph pretty easily from the graph of the cosine. You can do the same thing to sketch the graph of the cosecant. Remember, the cosecant is um, 1 over the sine in this case. So you should start by drawing the graph of the sine. Remember the sine is the vertical component. So when the angle is 0, you're on the level. Um, at pi halves, you get 1. At pi, you're back to 0. At 3 pi halves, you're down to negative 1. At 2 pi, you're back to 0. And we can go backwards at the, at the, with this. At negative pi halves, you're at negative 1. At negative pi, you're at 0. At negative 3 pi halves, you're at 1. At negative 2 pi, you're back down to 0. So we've got the graph of the secant pretty quickly just from remembering those um, oh, four or maybe five points around the circle, thinking of 2 pi and 0 as the same sort of thing, so four or five points. Right? So we can, we can draw the graph of the, the sine easily. And since the cosecant, oh, I'm not spelling very well here. Cosecant, CSC of an angle is actually 1 over the sine. Then we can figure out what the graph of the cosecant is going to do. Let me change colors again. OK, we can tell that cosecant, since it's 1 over sine, is going to have trouble every time the sine goes to 0. In fact, it's going to go essentially infinite as sine goes to 0, right? So I'm just going to draw in a vertical asymptote at these multiples of pi, because that's where sine is going to be 0. And that's going to create vertical asymptotes for cosecant. And just remember this idea. It'll come up in other places, but 1 or regular size divided by a tiny is going to be large. So let's see. At uh, pi halves, the sine is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. So there's our cosecant. As the angle increases towards pi, the sine is getting smaller. So that means that smaller number will go into 1 more and more times. Right? So essentially going vertical as you approach pi. Same thing as we go back, right? Now, over here, 1 divided by a negative has to be negative, but otherwise, it's the same picture. Oh, this looks a lot like the graph of the secant. But then again, the graph of the sine is a lot like the graph of the cosine. The only difference is that the, um, the peak has been shifted over by an amount pi halves for sine. And so all of the whole shapes here for the secant have been shifted over by an amount pi halves when you look at the cosecant versus the secant. So just comparing those two graphs, you can see everything just shifted over by pi halves. Ah, you could even use this technique to draw a decent sketch of, say, tangent or cotangent. So let's start off by putting on um, the sine and the cosine first. So I'll just uh, put the cosine on. Let's see. Um, at 0, it's 1. At pi halves, it's 0. At pi, it's negative 1. At 3 pi halves, it's back to 0. At 2 pi, it's 1 again. And we can do the same picture going backwards. So we've got a sketch of cosine here. So while I've, oops, that's the peak, so. Okay, while I've got this here, I'm going to label the cosine of alpha in black here. Let's go and uh, change my ink color. And we'll draw the sign now. Sign is just the picture shifted over, isn't it? So we just have this. Okay. OK, 
catch that in. And there's the graph of the sine of alpha. Now let's think what happens with the tangent. Remember, the tangent, get one more color here. The tangent is the same thing as the sine divided by the cosine. Now, the sine is going to always be between negative 1 and 1. The trouble occurs in the denominator, because where the cosine is 0, then the tangent is going to be a regular size number divided by super, super tiny, right? So we're going to have trouble every time the cosine goes to 0. That means we're going to have trouble here. Uh, oh, no, let's see, the cosine is 0 there. So we're going to have trouble here, because the cosine is 0 at pi halves. We're going to have trouble here, because the cosine is 0 at negative pi halves. We're going to have trouble, where is it 0 again, at 3 pi halves? We're going to have trouble at 3 pi halves then. And we'll have trouble at minus 3 pi halves. I'm just looking at everywhere where the cosine is 0. I'm just going to draw me a pretty good sketch of the tangent. Let's see, first off, remember the tangent is going to be the red one divided by the black one, the sine divided by the cosine. So right here, when the angle is 0, the sine is 0. 0 divided by 1 is still 0, so that gives us that point on the tangent. Pi fours the sine and cosine are the same, so that's going to give us 1. And now as we move towards pi halves, the denominator, the cosine, is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the tangent is going to get larger and larger and larger. So we're going to see something that blows up like this. Over on this side, it's basically the same picture except for the cosine is, um, or the sine, sorry, is negative. The cosine is positive. A negative divided by a positive has to be negative. So we get um, at minus 5 pi force, it's 1 again. And then as we go back, we get this picture. I'm just thinking about this from the point of view of um, first, well, positive divided by positive is positive, negative divided by negative is negative, and positive divided by negative or negative divided by positive is negative. So I hope I said that right. Negative divided by negative is positive, yeah. OK, and then this idea that when you take a regular size number and divide it by a tiny number, you get something really huge. Let's go here. Here the sine at pi, the sine is 0. So the tangent is going to be 0 divided by negative 1. That's going to be 0. In, in this region, let's see, both of them are negative 1 at, uh, uh, what is this, 5 pi force? The tangent and the cotangent are both negative 1. Doesn't quite, my graph isn't quite perfect there. but OK, they're both negative 1. That means that the tangent is going to be 1. And then as we go here, the sine is getting really close to negative 1, but the cosine is going to, going to 0. We have a negative divided by negative that's going to be positive, and it's going to be a big positive because we have a regular size divided by tinier and tinier numbers. OK, so that creates that shape in the graph. If you think it through, you'll get this shape here. And this is something that's kind of interesting here. When you look at the graph of the tangent, it just repeats, but it's actually, its period is shorter than 2 pi. Its period is actually only pi. So tangent is a pi periodic function. Ah, pretty neat. All right. So we know how to quickly draw the graphs of sine and cosine. We can just plunk down five angles. We get a pretty good sketch. We, we know what we're looking for anyway. Um, so we can draw those pretty quickly. We, if we can do that, we can draw either the tangent, the cotangent, the secant, or the cosecant just by a little bit of uh, thinking. Remember, the big thing is that a regular size number divided by a tiny number is going to turn out to be large. The smaller the number in the denominator, the bigger the output is going to be.